this episode of Ice Pilots NWT, oh, Joe loses his pilot's license I've been under this and puts his replacements under the spotlight from the back seat. Oh. <laughs> Buffalo Airways gets Stanley Cup fever, and Mikey swoons over the most precious cargo he's ever seen. There are two kinds of charter jobs at Buffalo Airways. The regular ones hauling freight. Sorry, we're late. And the once in a lifetime jobs that no one ever forgets. And today, General Manager Mikey McBrien has some exciting news to share with his father and boss, Joe McBrien, about one of those special jobs. Quick question. Do they want to hold a Stanley Cup around? Do they want to go from Whitehorse to Yellowknife? Fort McMurray, and then done. A charter opportunity to tour the Stanley Cup around the north. And it's a whole big, it's a big thing. Um. The Stanley Cup, donated in 1892 by Lord Stanley of Preston, Canada's Governor General at the time. It's the oldest and most revered professional sports trophy in North America. The grand prize awarded to the winning team at the end of the National Hockey League's annual playoffs. Now it's coming to the north on a special tour. They want to use a DC-3, so I was thinking uh, that we just charge them straight fuel. What are you taking, a cup, a Stanley Cup? In 10 guys. I think it's a chance of a lifetime to get the fuck. A bunch of men running around short pants, long stockings, eh? Huge hockey fans Mikey and Scott would love to land this contract. It's beautiful. It's a massive cup. It's the most impressive trophy in sports, in my opinion. They realize that we're a little bit overkill for what they need, but it creates a lot of free publicity for both sides. There's a lot of publicity there, but uh, let me think about it for a minute. The Stanley Cup would normally put a smile on Joe's face, but today, other things are weighing on him. Hey, what's happening? Mikey catches up with Flight Ops Director Mike Hanley. What's going on with what? Go, man. He's acting all weird. Because he's losing his license for 10 days. Jesus. I'm just finding out about this now. He, he can't fly? Or what does he for do? 10 days. The feds are suspending Joe's pilot's license for allegedly flying in low fog two years ago. They're taking the license on the province that I flew in fog. That was below limits, but. When you live beside a big lake like Great Slave Lake, fog drifts in and off the shoreline. I don't even consider the weather bad that day, but they sit in judgment from a different angle. What are you doing? Joe just told me he's got a 10-day suspension of his license. Joe's oldest son, Rod, sees the big picture. So we got to find something for him to do. you got to keep Joe flying. To maintain balance of Buffalo Airways, Joe has to be in the air. For the past 40 years, Buffalo Joe has been flying World War II era DC-3 airplanes all over the north. Joe, my father, has been flying literally since he's around 16 years old. He loves his old warbirds, and that's what he loves to fly. In the McBrien household, the DC-3 was like the family car. My brother thought everyone had a DC-3. He didn't know any different. Six days a week for the past 28 years, Buffalo has operated a DC-3 passenger service called the SCED between its terminals in Hay River and Yellowknife. It has an impeccable safety record, and most of those 17,000 SCED flights have been flown by Buffalo Joe. My father is the captain of the longest and only uh, scheduled DC-3 service in the world. Um, that's pretty cool. But tomorrow, Joe's record-breaking run will be broken with a 10-day suspension. Yeah, so maybe yeah. Over the years, Joe has developed a close rapport with his passengers. He's good-hearted. Everybody knows him. He's done a lot for the community. And, you know, that he's made this airport into something kind of special. <laughs> now, Joe will have to hand the responsibility of flying the sked to someone else, something he's never been comfortable doing.
afternoon, Joe's Yellowknife passengers board the DC-3. Right on. Graham Ferguson will co-pilot. Andrew Fike will be the flight attendant. And Buffalo's young DC-3 captain, 25-year-old Gord Cooling, is Joe's chosen replacement. Gord got the chance of a lifetime. He's doing it, youngest DC-3 captain in the world. Gord will be coming along for the ride to Hay River tonight and taking over captain duties from Joe tomorrow. Joe's resigned himself to his fate. After tonight, he won't fly the sked again for 10 days. I'm not going to fight it. It's not worth fighting over it, and I got to go to that level. I don't want to go to that level. But this suspension won't be easy for him. Flying is in his bones. It says Buffalo on the side of the airplane. It really should just say Joe. He has uh, a business life, and that's what he lives 100%. Everything revolves around that, and that's what he knows. Flying is all he's ever wanted to do, ever since the day he, his first memory, I think he wanted to fly. 7324, y'all ain't one departure, 5,000 here, I think. One way, run five. Third to go, over to center. You know, they want me to turn in my license for 10 days, which is really a piece of paper. I remember when I learned to fly, I didn't even want the paper, I just wanted to fly. They'll take my paper. Well, they won't take my ability to fly an airplane. They can't touch that. OK, now i got to put the power to it. Gotcha. When Joe's on the flight, passengers like to see his face. It's like a sense of, uh, a sense of being comfortable. But after tomorrow, when Joe turns in his pilot's license, his passengers will see Gord as the captain and Graham and Andrew alternating as co-pilot and flight attendant. That is, if Andrew and Graham's airmanship passes muster with Joe. How many miles are you going in one minute? We'll be going about uh, 2.5. Yeah, we'll be going about 2.5 miles per minute. And the young co-pilots know meeting Joe's high standards won't be easy. Early the next morning, Joe prepares to head back to Yellowknife. Yeah, we just chill. I won't go every night. Inside the Hay River Terminal, where his daughter Kathy manages the sked flights, he tries not to think about what lies ahead. Jasper, where you been? Jasper, where you been? Where you been? What's this? This pocket? This one. He says, I know this is. Kathy's dog Jasper is a welcome distraction. So is the prospect of a Stanley Cup charter. But Joe's anxiety about turning in his pilot's license today is starting to surface. No, I don't know how to use that goddamn thing. No, you just, you don't, you, you don't have to. You just pull up and stick it on the, the pad. Just touch it to the pad. Yeah. You better come with me. Come on. I just want the wings to be as clean as they can be. Outside, yesterday's co-pilot and today's flight attendant, Graham Ferguson, preps the DC-3, aware of Joe's state of mind. I'm just trying not to get yelled at. In the left seat, Gord Cooling is where he wants to be, the captain of the sked. Joe gave me the go-ahead to fly his scheduled passengers, so it's quite the honor. Gord's co-pilot for this morning's flight is Andrew Vike. Ground power. Is everybody clear? Ten readers? They're online. The last person to board is Joe. And though he's not flying, nothing can stop him from being a backseat pilot. He'll be keeping close watch on this flight to make sure his passengers will be in good hands during his suspension. They're following the SOPs and checklists and everything, but I gotta be very alert that they don't miss anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard uh, Buffalo Airways DC-3. Three zero three one will be taxing departure thirty one. Buffalo one six nine Roger. Delta Polo Power, leave her back in Immediately on takeoff, there's an issue. He didn't like the power setting that we chose. He reached up when we were taking off and was adjusting the throttles and stuff like that. All right, I think now, but do you understand what holds those throttles up there? 
I think so now. Go read the book. With Joe on edge over his upcoming suspension, the young pilots are in for a rough ride. Crossing Great Slave Lake on the way from Hay River to Yellowknife, a Buffalo DC-3 passenger flight is off to a rough start. Hey, okay, well, I'll tell you what, 550, what is 550? Uh, 550 is what is our max. First time, take off. How do you set it? Uh, okay, just, you don't know, okay, you don't know. Buffalo Joe is especially on edge today because his license is being suspended. He wants his young flight crew, Gord Cooling and Andrew Fike, to give his passengers a perfect ride. But so far, he's not happy. Yeah, they're gonna put 28 people in a airplane and have you guys plowing off you in the runway not knowing what you're doing. I think we did a good job. Yeah, well, I don't think so. For Gord and Andrew, this 50-minute flight feels like an eternity, with Joe challenging their every move. Fuck, we're out with it. You don't know what you got for power, do you? Joe jumps on them for their uneven engine power settings. Still got one in 10, one in 20. That's why the airplane's dragging its ass. You can't feel it, can you? Gord's flying safely, but Joe wants to see airmanship even he'd find difficult. As hard as I fly today, I can never fly that airplane as well as I could when I was 25, and they're 25, 23. And they better be able to fly better than I can. A tough task. Joe's been at the helm of DC-3s for over 40 years. Gord's been a captain less than a year, and Andrew has only been in the co-pilot seat for a few months. I got more experience. I can judge better on a lot of stuff, and I can, I can forecast down the road, but the physical handling of the airplane and the instrument flying should come easy to me. By the time they touch down at Yellowknife, Joe's disappointment is off the charts. You don't know how to run them, so how the hell do you know how to control them if one fails you? Immediately after the flight, right? he no, catches that's... Andrew in the hangar. But when I see a performance like you've seen this morning, I know f***ing well you don't know. I'm not happy at all what I've seen this morning. This, this is all I have, and I put everything into this. That's well, then let's, let's see some results of it. Okay. You know, you want to go home in a box? Of course not. Well, OK. It put me in a state of mind that I have never felt before. I was stressed, I felt like crap, I was angry, I was pissed off. So I was watching, oh, it's, it's, it's brutal. And Later, Joe commiserates with Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader and Mike Hanley. Under ideal condition, they were making it very sloppily, very sloppily. Joe's worried that neither rookie, Andrew nor Graham, have enough experience to co-pilot the sked. Everything went the matter. They don't understand the airplane. They're too green, they're just too... Well, yeah. we did start them. Pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty quick, yeah. We had we we had they can barely fly yet. We're putting them in airplanes that are very difficult to fly. And Joe's a little impatient with them. Joe thought his suspension would be a good opportunity for Andrew and Graham to fly with new DC-3 Captain Gord Cooling. But after this morning, he's having serious doubts about that combination. Because they need a co-pilot. Yeah. We don't. Yeah, exactly. So he decides to put his most experienced captains on the sked. Justin or Arnie will do the sked for me for 10 days and uh, whatever other flying they can do. And that means Gord loses his chance to captain the sked. But back in the hangar, Mikey's got some good news. Oh, well, he's got the Stanley Cup trip on the board. Joe's approved the Stanley Cup charter. The amount of time I've been at Buffalo, I've never seen the trip this cool. Usually it's seniority or who flew last, how I decide the next crew. Everyone's always trying to sneak their name on there for trips, so. But this one's something special, and it took a special scenario how to figure it out. The cup was born in competition, so why would we change a, a lasting tradition? Mikey's come up with a hockey-themed way of choosing the crew for this once-in-a-lifetime mission, a shootout. I got the sign-up sheet for the, the, the shootout. Yeah. Sign-up sheet for the shootout in the pouch room at noon tomorrow. <laughs> I got the sign-up sheet for the shootout tomorrow at noon for the Stanley Cup trip. While Mikey recruits contenders, Joe has more serious business to take care of. This is the charge, and that's the license they want. He must surrender his pilot's license to Transport Canada for a two-year-old infraction, flying in low fog below acceptable levels. 
I don't think I was guilty, but it doesn't matter. They found me guilty. I'll, uh, I'll see how it goes. I just got to get down there and get rid of it. Ugh. The inspector that uh, issued the suspension uh, told my lawyer, saying I was high profile while no one in the north, I didn't have to make a, a sizable suspension to use me as an example. Look at that, they're not even here. They've always said they'd like me not to fly people around in DC-3s anymore because we're the last one in the world doing it. And with DC-3s on a scheduled service. Next year, I've been flying 50 years. I've always been under this threat. You guys are late. You can take my license. I got to turn it in for 10 days. OK, no problem. <sighs> because after nearly 50 years, they have to get a, a shot at me somehow. Dodge that bullet. With his wings clipped, Joe's kids are worried he'll become a terror around the hangar. Oh, I thought it was going to be bad. I thought it was going to be really bad. I, I thought it was going to hit the fan all from all levels. If Joe doesn't fly for whatever reason, he gets too much into multitasking in the little things that he shouldn't worry about, and uh, things get uh, real bad then. But Joe couldn't bear to stick around Buffalo watching others fly. It's like a freaking five-year prison sentence. It's like these 10 days are like the worst things ever happened to him. So he's surprising them all and getting out of town, going south to Victoria, British Columbia. Well, I got to go see an old flying crony of mine. And actually, he's the founding president of Buffalo. He's in the hospital, so I got to go down to a pre-med on him, make sure he should be in there. He didn't get a suspension. He never would have flown down. and. You know, spend some time with him. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good one. Yeah, I sure will. Thanks. Joe's taking some well-deserved time off. You John first? But when the cat's away... Hey, sports fans. Welcome to the first annual Buffalo Airways, the most illegal way to pick a co-pilot. Mikey McBrien has transformed the Buffalo hangar into a ball hockey rink for a shootout to decide who will escort the Stanley Cup on its northern tour. Everybody in the hangar is vying to get a spot on the airplane, so yeah, it's a real fierce competition out there. The co-pilots hoping to be on one of the two DC-3 legs with the Stanley Cup are Ian Bottomley, Graham Ferguson, and Andrew Vike. I like hockey and flying are two of my favorite things, so it's pretty awesome. And flight attendants Audrey Marchand, Chris Matheson, and John Martin are set to battle it out as well. You know, growing up playing hockey, I always wanted to be the guy that is going to hoist Stanley Cup someday. I don't know, man. I heard these guys are pretty good. I'm pretty nervous. Let's see how it goes. Everyone will be trying to score on the Stanley Cup charter captain, Justin Simley. They could have done a little better. We couldn't afford adult stuff, uh, but we got the juvenile. You got a cup on there, bud? <laughs> yeah, that was the only part of the equipment that was absolutely mandatory. Justin is a very brave man, but he's also a very skinny man. Uh, luckily enough, he, the, the child stuff fit him. Wearing kids' equipment, the goalie is ready. Who's going first? The shootout can begin. First off, Audrey. Next shooter is Rampy Chris. But Justin stops him too. Hey, John, John, you need this one. Hey, you put the pressure on. Then it's John's turn. Oh! Justin blew me away. That guy's a pretty good goalie. We thought it would be a joke. Uh, he turned out not to be a joke. Oh. No one could score on him. You know he's wearing child's clothing. He's a pretty good goalie. Go T. <laughs> I've got the stab. Oh! Eventually, the shooters start to find the back of the net. Oh! John's going to White Horse. John! <laughs> go, Daddy, go! Hang on. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Ian even has his own personal cheering section. Oh! Yeah! Ian's going to White Horse. 
The White Horse crew is set, but the Fort McMurray leg is still up for grabs. He's coming in, doing something crazy. Oh! Andrew wins. He, Andrew's going to Fort McMurray. I heard it's nice this time of year. <laughs> then comes Audrey's last attempt. She scores and secures a spot on the plane. The lovable Audrey, I don't even think knows what the Stanley Cup is. The shootout is over, and so is Buffalo's most unorthodox method of choosing a flight crew. Everyone wants to go fly the Stanley Cup around. I mean, even just to go see it is great, but to, you know, fly from the Yukon to the territories here, you know, it's something to be proud of. It's gonna be pretty awesome just to be able to stand next to the cup and get a few pictures. Where's that ball go? Right over here. With the crew set, Buffalo will send one of its vintage DC-3s to pick up the most precious piece of cargo ever, the Stanley Cup. But before that day comes, it's back to work for Graham and Andrew. It's Andrew's first time in the co-pilot seat since his disastrous flight with Joe. Yeah, that was a shitty fucking day. Holy crap, that was a shitty day. The one little thing about the shit list at Buffalo is it's, it's always rotating, and you just gotta wait your turn. Watch your feet. It's inevitable that you, put, you find your name on the top of it, and sometimes you find yourself at the bottom, and the bottom is where you wanna be. Today, Andrew's hoping to work his way back down to the bottom. With Joe out of town, Andrew will be flying with captain and goaltender extraordinaire, Justin. We're taking the sked down to Hay River tonight. We've got uh, Graham and Andrew. Uh, Andrew's gonna be flying with me tonight. A 10-year Buffalo veteran, Justin knows exactly what Andrew's going through. Oh yeah, I'm in the doghouse all the time around here. I don't worry about it too much. In fact, I don't worry about it at all. Boost pumps, anti-ice, radio master radios. After a smooth takeoff, with nobody giving him the gears, Andrew settles into the flight. So what did you think of flying with Joe, Andrew? Flying with Joe is very different. He definitely yells at you a lot, being a new pilot, but uh, just wants us to be, the, I guess, the best pilots that we can be. He's got his own way. We just have to adapt to it. Yeah, that's pretty much the same way it was when I started flying with Joe. Lots of yelling, lots of learning. Just uh, sorted out as best you can. You guys are doing good. Just keep it up. Cool. Andrew, see you in a cookie. Thanks. Shall I get anything to drink? Flight attending in the cabin, Graham notices the difference in his buddy. Andrew looks pretty relaxed. He was looking pretty stressed out this last week. He's looking better now. Let's go flat. Full flat. Final check's complete. You clear to land. The flight across Great Slave Lake ends without incident. The sked touches down in Hay River. Right on, Saigon. Right on. We did really good. He's coming along quickly, and uh, both him and Graham are pretty good to have in the seat with us. Same old learning process for, for everybody. Good job, man. Getting better every time he goes flying. Yeah, man. And it will get even better when he gets to fly with the Stanley Cup and its most oh. adoring fan. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. At Buffalo, the big day has finally arrived. It's a big honor to go and pick up the Stanley Cup and uh, fly it in a DC-3. It might be the last time that cup ever flies in a three, so uh, yeah, it's a big honor, for sure. Buffed and polished, this 68-year-old DC-3 is ready to pick up the 117-year-old Stanley Cup on a special tour of the North. Mikey's excited to see the cup in person. Oh, here we go. So is Scott, one of Buffalo's co-pilots, who's coming along because he helped set up the charter. <laughs> Here's 
The DC-3 will fly to Whitehorse in the Yukon to pick up the Stanley Cup, then return to Yellowknife and head to Fort McMurray, Alberta a few days later. Once they're in flight, co-pilot Ian gives up the right seat to flight attendant and trainee pilot John. A bonus John wasn't expecting. Anytime I can get my hands on the controls, I'm going to take it. And Whitehorse was a great opportunity to do it. You know, I got a bit of training in. This is pretty cool, man. Wow. Yeah. Crossing into the Yukon, the DC-3 passes close above the Mackenzie Mountains. Flying through the mountains on the way up to Whitehorse is beautiful. The scenery might be breathtaking, but mountains can cause turbulence and downdrafts. Yeah, this old girl, she's scared of hikes, this one. Isn't it? Going through the mountainous regions, they get a little bumpy there, so it's a challenge, but Justin's just there, you know, watching, keeping an eye on me and stuff. So we just kept our altitude and rode out. While John makes the most of his flying opportunity, Mikey recharges his batteries in anticipation of his first ever meeting with the Stanley Cup. Mikey, you know, it's his dream basically to pick up Stanley Cup and hold it. Mikey won't have long to wait as the DC-3 touches down in Whitehorse. That's it. That's all. That's everything. Whitehorse. Waiting for the cup. Should be arriving any second now. I'm pretty excited. Uh, frick. I'm going to see Lord Stanley get on the uh, vintage airplane. You know, it's kind of cool. So, well, here it is, boys. Hey, How are you doing? How are you? Good, you? Phil and Mike, better known as the Cup Cops, are eager to get going. Can we keep the briefcases handy? Yeah, you got it. So this one, I got a little red one. This one you got it. But Mikey's focused on one specific piece of baggage. Holy smokes. This is it right here. What are we going to do, have it out? Oh, yeah, if we can open it, that'd be pretty freaking cool. It was in this little black indiscriminate box. It didn't look anything fancy. Could have could have had a coffee maker in it for anyone's concern. Oh, <laughs> holy smokes. It's almost embarrassing how much I like the cup. <laughs> <Right on. laughs> That's cool. Scott gets a picture with Lord Stanley's mug and his old buddy, Cup Cop Mike Bolt. Uh, luck may have it, one of the Cup Cops uh, is Scotty's friend from, uh, from camp. Just a friend of mine from uh, camp back in the day. We're an old friend? True enough. His job is to watch the cup as she goes around the world. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thanks, buddy. Scotty got a hold of me and said, I'm up here working for this airline up in Yellowknife, and I got contacted about mean, flying the Stanley Cup around, around, and he starts telling me about the history of the World War II planes, and I'm going, this is awesome. And I've never been any close to these kind of planes before. I've been doing this 11 years now, and this is one of the trips I've been looking forward to for a few months. I travel 250 days a year with the greatest trophy in all the sports. No other inanimate object can make rugged, red-blooded Canadian men so giddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Here she is, eh? Holy. It's time to board. An historic moment. The Cup has never been on a DC-3 before. Most of the time we fly commercial, we don't charter very often. But to be on a DC-3 going from Whitehorse to Yellowknife, it's pretty special. The, the history behind the DC-3, the history behind the Stanley Cup, it's a natural fit. Shotgun this seat. That's not going anywhere. Yeah, the Cup Cops, Phil and Mike, they were awesome. They wanted that cup out of the box at all times. Let it breathe, like it's there for people's enjoyment. have that cup on that plane going across our great country, it is a pretty spectacular moment for everybody, the, the pilots, for the attendants, for everyone involved. Two incomparable icons, the DC-3 and the Stanley Cup. Yeah. I love the idea of the history of this. Love it. Yeah. But during the flight, it's not all about the Stanley Cup. 
Members of the Cup's entourage are fascinated with the old warbird they're flying in. So this plane was built in 1942. Yeah, Rosie the Riveter. You can see the rivets are perfectly I've been, well, I've been keeping a very close eye on those rivets, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mikey keeps the Cup company on the long flight. This is when Stanley was this little. Look, this is a little guy. His shoe grew since then. High five. <laughs> it certainly is much more of a celebrity than an inanimate object. Absolutely. It sort of becomes its own person that doesn't talk. But can you imagine if it could talk, the stories that thing could tell? My lord. <laughs> Well into the five-hour flight, Ian gives up his seat again. But on this leg, it's not John getting some stick time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is your co-pilot, Lauren Stanley. Uh, we're along here at uh, altitude of about 9,000 feet over Northwest Territories on our way to Yellowknife. Stanley heads back to his seat as the DC-3 heads for home. I've been on DC-3s before I was one years old, and like the novelty's worn off, and it's this is amazing. This is easily the best day at work I've ever had in my life. And this relationship seems to be taking a more serious turn. Mikey, <laughs> tell you, it's gonna be hard peeling the cup out of his hands. <laughs> but Mikey will have to share the love when Joe returns to Buffalo and catches cup fever. <laughs> a Buffalo Air DC-3 is on approach to the Yellowknife Airport, carrying an MVP, most valuable passenger. You never believe who I'm sitting next to. The Stanley Cup is on a tour of the North. And it's the People's Trophy, and that's the greatest thing about the NHL and the Hockey Hall of Fame have done is bring it around to the people. And one of those people is completely love-struck. I really didn't care about anything else except that Stanley Cup. It's just amazing. It leaves me speechless. Final check, please. Final check, sir. It's one of those moments that will never happen again. You know, the airplane lands and what's on it? The Stanley Cup, man. What the f***, okay? Outside the Buffalo hangar, a small crowd has gathered for a peek at the oldest trophy in professional sports. There she is. Hey, Crosby, I want to talk to Crosby. Right here. Oh. Crosby's there. Everybody wants to be near it, to touch it, to hold it. Sweet. Oh, There's Mary over there. Put smiles on their faces. Mikey lets the cup come between him and his girlfriend, Gail. <laughs> I like the cup exactly how it is. It's bare, it's there. And that's what blew me away, is, is how real it is. Come on, right, big smile now. Aww. Back from his suspension-induced vacation, <laughs> Buffalo Joe takes a turn with Lord Stanley. Touch it, touch it. Touch it. Kiss it, kiss it. <laughs> you should have seen what your son was doing right now. Don't get anyone for the Hall of Fame here, please. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was pretty funny around the cup. <laughs> I know, we're not even halfway through this thing yet, and I'm, it's just awesome. Yeah, good, yeah. man. Our pleasure, really. It was great. Really cool. Yeah, we can just peel the cup away from friggin' Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we need this thing in June, you know that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. After a day of being kissed, hugged, handled, and held, mostly by Mikey, Stanley hits the showers. A lot of times we just take like, like a wet cloth like this and just wipe it down, and then give it a buff dry. Every once in a while, you come on the road for a while, you get a one shot. Okay. Where would a fill go? I imagine that disappears when the work has to be done. Oh, look who showed up. Mike did the dirty work. 
Now Phil tucks the cup in for the night. Tomorrow will be a busy day. It's cup day in Yellowknife. It starts with a stop on the edge of town, and then the main event. The Scotiabank Celebration of Hockey goes on tour. We're at 15 stops over the winter this year. We take it to small communities uh, where they may not otherwise have the opportunity to see the cup. Another cool thing I, uh, about the whole trip was, you know, getting to see the look on people's faces. Justin brings his daughter to see the cup. Knuckles. 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 <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Michael, what did I tell you? Outside. I know. <laughs> what did I tell you? That's about 30 feet from the cup right now, isn't it? <laughs> Listen to the cup cops, Mike. Listen to the cup cops. By now, Mike Bold almost needs a restraining order to deal with this Stanley Cup stalker. It was really picking on me more than anything when it came to the cup, because he saw how much I liked it. I don't know, got a little bond with that cup over there, and it's, uh, it's my last day, so it's bittersweet, man. You know, we get to see the cup all yesterday. We get to spend uh, most of the day with it, you know what, and it's going to be gone. And uh, come the end of the playoffs, it'll be someone else's, but at least for today, she's mine. But Mikey seems to have some competition. My father's an old-school hockey fan. He talks about players that I never even heard of in, in matches I don't even know even happened. Joe understands the value of hockey in the north. It's a very good game for isolated communities, isolated settlements, camps. It brings a lot of people together. It gives them a lot of reasons to talk. It's good. Pretty good to see my father here. He's uh, running around getting to talk to people. He's usually antisocial, so this is the first time I've seen him in a social setting that wasn't a wedding or a funeral, so you know it's a big deal. Here, have a couple stickers for your, for your quad, OK? Good guy. Take care. After a few hours of group cup love, the festivities are over. The next morning, co-pilot Andrew Fike preps the DC-3 for its final stop on the Stanley Cup tour. Like Andrew, flight attendant Audrey Marchand won her spot on this flight in the shootout, but she doesn't have cup fever like everyone else. Then she gets a moment alone with Stanley. I see Montreal Canadiens in 1986. I was born in 1986. And she warms a little more to the cup. I like this part right here. Way better than this part. And now, Joe's 10-day suspension is over. He's got his license back, and he wants in on the Stanley Cup action. We're off to Fort McMurray with the Stanley Cup. and. Buffalo Joe flying us, which when we uh, originally uh, were making the plans, we had no idea we'd be so lucky as to have uh, Joe flying us as well. This will be Mikey's last few hours with the cup before he has to bid adieu, as this whirlwind romance winds to an end. You know, if you love something, you gotta let it go, right? The final leg of Buffalo Air's Stanley Cup charter to Fort McMurray, Alberta, is set to depart from Yellowknife. The Fort Mac trip was the people who placed second in the shootout. So co-pilot was Andrew, and uh, flight attendant was Audrey. And of course, my father is the captain. Okay, 3333 McMurray, Point Blast, that's the Rookie co-pilot Andrew Fike is flying with Buffalo Joe for the first time since Joe tore a strip off him nearly two weeks ago. With his license suspension behind him, Joe's more relaxed. So we're on our way. We should be Fort McMurray at high noon. Okay, copy that, Joe. You guys have a good day. Yeah, okay, thank you. Have a good one, too. In the cabin, Mikey is still head over heels, monopolizing the cup. This is the first playoffs I remember watching uh, as a kid, uh, religiously, was the 1992-93 the playoffs on what you all won. I watched every single game right from the beginning. 
I was 10 years old. I still remember going outside, making a, a little Stanley Cup out of a five gallon pail and running it around. For a 10 year old and for a 27 year old, having the same feeling, not many objects can do that. And uh, the cup can. It's freaking amazing, man. This is awesome. It's awesome now, but Joe knows the letdown his son is in for once they land. Once we get there, we got to split, you see, so this way we, you know, it's a heartbreak, you know. Very sad, very sad. Yeah. Well, with every good romance, you know, it's got to come to an end sometime. But Mikey's not going to let go so easily. I got two and a half hours to say goodbye to the cup, and, you know, it was pretty hard. Your last stop on the journey. On the tarmac in Fort McMurray. There she goes. It's been a good trip. Mikey prepares to say his final goodbye to the cup. Don't want to see her go. As Buffalo Airways, we got to help bring a piece of history that everyone will enjoy. It's as cool to be a little, little, little fact. Yeah, it's pretty cool to be part of the history. Uh, no. Anytime the NHL needs anything, I'm a willing mascot for anything. Thank you again. That was fantastic, okay. and your crew was amazing. And Thanks for coming. Everything was Thanks for coming. Be sure you come back. Unbelievable experience. Never forget it. All right. Well, it was a great few days. You know what? It's the people that made the trip really great. Over, Mikey. I, I don't know how we're past going to cross again, man. I don't know. You know, if you love something, you got to let it go, right? If it comes back, it's meant to be. For now, Mikey is resigned to his fate. He knows the romantic problems of one man and a shiny metal trophy don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. So you're OK there, big guy? Yeah, I'm OK. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. For three days, it was just Buffalo Air Race in the Cup. And that is worth more than anything that I can think of. Mikey may not be able to spend time with the cup anymore, but he knows they'll always have Yellowknife. On the next episode of Ice Pilots NWT.